Hello everyone, welcome to this Blender tutorial. Today I want to talk about using the grease pencil to do some traditional style 2D animation by drawing frame by frame. For all of this feature you are going to have to use a version that is at least version 2.73 because with that version they added some improvements to the grease pencil tool and some changes that I am going to use. So let's head into Blender. First off I want to select the cube and the lamp that are there by default by shift right clicking on the lamp and the cube and both should be selected pressing X to delete it. Then I want to replace my camera. I select it by right clicking on it. Press Alt R and Alt G to move it back to the center. Press R to rotate, X to rotate it along the X axis and 9 0 for 90 degrees of rotation. Now it's in the center and aligned with the green Y axis. I press G to move it and Y to move it back along the Y axis. And that is going to be my setup. So let's look at the grease pencil tool. In the tool shelf right here, if you scroll down, you have grease pencil. And in this tool you want to activate continuous drawing that will make things a bit easier once you go into the drawing session. And to actually add a grease pencil layer you have to expand this right here by clicking the, the plus up here or pressing the N button. You will have grease pencil, make sure the checkbox is selected and simply press new and you have a new crease pencil and now by D by holding the D key and left clicking into the scene you will be able to draw stuff like this. As you can see this is a line drawn directly into 3D space and down here you could adjust Right now we are still in draw mode, so if I left click I can keep drawing. I can exit this drawing mode by pressing escape. And now down here you can see we can adjust the color of the stroke or of the pencil that we have used. We can make the lines thicker or thinner. Three, three pixels is fine with me. And then there's this filling feature that you can adjust. Right now it's a 0% um, opacity. You can increase this. And you now see the green layer is filled and I have strange things going on in 3D space because I've drawn from this perspective later on when you draw from the camera view, it won't be an issue because it will all be thrown into the same layer in space, so to speak. But be careful with this filling tool. Let me press D and left click again to enter drawing mode again. If you have something like this with an opening in the shape, you will see that the fill option tries to fill it all and does not consider these cuts or irregularities in the shape. So right now it's a bit buggy, this fill feature, but they're working on it. It will be improved sometime and right now there's still another bug. You can see right here there are some stripes. That is a bug that has to do with your graphic cards, graphics cards driver. Some drivers will have these strange lines, some won't. So just so you know this. And let's delete those. We could either delete this layer here completely or we could down here, uh, over here, 
you can see you can enter drawing mode to draw stuff and you can escape and you can enter erase mode to delete stuff again. Let me delete the layer right here. And now let's go to the interesting part of animation. I press zero on the numpad to enter the camera view. And now let's say we want to draw a very easy ball bouncing around. I enter drawing mode and I draw the first frame a little big. Control C to delete it. Let's say this. And now if I move forward with the arrow keys a couple of frames, let's say 10 frames, and I draw something here, you can see from the first frame and then on the 10th frame it will suddenly be over here. And of course that is too much of a jump, but just to show you the principle, if I move ahead, oh, it's always the same, you move ahead a couple of frames and then you draw again and a new keyframe, those are those yellow stripes here, will be added. Now let's say we are not happy with those keyframes we have created. Let's have a look at them in the dope sheet view. Right now you won't see anything, but if you switch down here from dope sheet to grease pencil, you can see the three keyframes that have been created right here. You can select them with right click press G to move them around in case you want them to be at a different position so you can actually adjust the timing of your animation and move frames around if you want them to be later or earlier or what I'm going to do right now you select both of them shift left click uh, shift right clicking press X and you delete them and now we are back onto our first frame go into drawing mode again I move forward two frames and now something weird happened. Let me delete the complete layer and start again. I draw, move forward two frames, two frames forward and now you see with every two frames the ball moves, but to do some proper animation it's nice to see the frames that you have had before. And to do this we are going to use onion skinning. If I click right here I can see at 50% opacity the frame that was before it and if I go to the middle frame the frames after. To make this a little bit better to work with, I choose, let's say, a green color for the frames that come before it and a blue, no, no a reddish color for frames that come after it. And now it's not colorized right now. We have to turn on this box. And now you see first frame has one in front of it. And if, you, if I tell it to display two frames afterwards, or three, or four, it will display more animation steps. And let's say the same for the before frames. And now I go to another frame, press D and left click and draw two frames ahead. I draw again and this is basically the procedure for traditional animation. We move 
to a different frame and we draw where it would be and so on and so on. I will escape and down here I will set the end frame by pressing E while I hover over this timeline. And now if I go back to the beginning and click play animation, turn off the onion skinning and you can see this ball bouncing around. Now a couple of words on this. Of course there are a lot of features missing because you can only adjust the thickness of the stroke completely and if you make it too thick you can see it looks rather strange but it's still usable for some quick doodles or, or some basic animations and oh another cool feature let's say we have I've almost forgotten to tell you this. We have this little feature here, edit, uh, enable editing. Mm. Crease pencil, enable editing. So I am here and if I click this, I can select single points of this circle. I can press circle select to select multiple of those escape to leaf circle selection and if I'm not pleased with those I could also select all, deselect all So, but let's say I am not pleased with those right here deselect this one and I can press G to move this one around forgotten one here G and sort of fix little mistakes in my drawing that I've made. Adjust the frame and I could also select everything and move it to a completely different layer. And this will if I mention it, uh, let me, if you move it around, it will also create another keyframe. You might have noticed here, when I moved it, this one frame ga gap that was there between them has created, uh, is erased and there are actually two frames right here. So let me get it in the, into an in-between position so to do a ball like this the actual proper way to make sure the ball always has the same shape would have been to erase it all press d left click to enter drawing mode draw it once and then just select all move two frames forward, press G to move it. Don't forget to enable online sk onion skinning again. And always move it around with G. So you can move around your hand-drawn stuff and if we, here, if we are here on the last frame, let's say we want it to be squished, we could select all and then press S to scale, Z to scale it along the Z axis and squish it or stretch it. So you can do a lot of things to those point lines and you can 
I believe it accepts a tablet so you can actually draw a bit better than using a mouse. And now let's say we want to render out this animation onto a white background. First of all, let's go to world settings and change the background to a white color and make sure under render settings shading we have sky selected transparent would be the right choice if we want to render this out as an image sequence with alpha channel in it and of course we don't want to want the animation to go into the temp folder so we will choose a folder like that and name the file animation whatever mov and the simplest way to render out an animation is not as a png animation sequence but to choose h264 as a codec and under encoding choose quicktime to get that mov ending correctly and set a bitrate whatever And now if you would press render animation, what would happen is the same as what would happen. Let me show us quickly. If we press render, we see exactly just the white background. And if we would press animation, it would render out every frame of this animation, just a white background. Why is that? Normally, the Grease Pencil tool started out as just a quick tool to, well, paint into the scene to make some, to basically sketch something out, and it was not meant for final rendering. The way around this is to go to render, and instead of use using render animation or the standard render image, OpenGL render image. And now we get OpenGL rendering with the ball inside it. And if we click OpenGN GL um, render animation, we could before that also set the alpha mode, transparent or sky again, increase the anti-aliasing to get a bit more smooth curves if we were to render out some actual object, but now if we render out our animation we get fairly quickly every single frame rendered out of my pretty messy drawings and we now have this oops wrong movie sorry animation we have this animation as a mov movie file that's all for now I hope you learned something and happy blending.